The White House panics. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, the Biden administration is in full panic mode. Is this just crashed? by 50%. We'll show you why this is so worrisome for the Biden administration and how it will actually end up devastating the U.S. economy. But is there some hope that President Biden can hang on to before the elections? We'll show you what that is. Plus, we have a sponsor of today's show. We'd like to welcome Power Metals Corp. You can find them on the OTC under symbol PWRMF and on the TSXV under symbol PWM. They're one of Canada's premier mining companies, and I'm going to show you an incredible chart setup that could squeeze the stock up by 32% in a matter of a day or two. You don't want to miss this. This is an incredible setup. Stay tuned to the end of the show to see that or check out the pinned comment or description for more information. Now, let's go to Bloomberg, where he picked today's story up with a headline, the June Fed rate cut odds dip below 50% after strong ISM data. And this is a huge problem for the Biden administration because they have been talking about how the economy needs rate cuts. This is a big victory. If they can get the Fed to cut rates maybe two or three times before the November elections, this would be huge for them. But based on this data today, well, it takes off off the table. We'll show you what the market reaction here, but this is not the news the Biden administration wanted. The problem is it's going to end up devastating the U.S. economy. But maybe, maybe there's a little hope. We'll show you what that is. But let's continue on. As the amount of Fed easing price into swap contracts for this year dropped to fewer than 65 basis points, less than Fed policymakers themselves have forecast after the ISM manufacturing for March exceeded all estimates in the Bloomberg survey economists. A bond market itself here in soon, which the two to 30 year yields rose by at least 10 basis points on the day and actually extended that since this article was printed among their biggest daily increases this year as a market said, wait a minute, maybe we have this wrong. Maybe rates aren't high enough. Maybe they need to go back up. Maybe the Fed nailed this soft landing and we are at a new normal in rates. This highly unlikely but let's take a look at that ism report and see what the market reacted to because here you can see the manufacturing pmi came in at 50.3 now the way you read this is anything over 50 denotes an expansion over the prior month anything under 50 is a contraction over the prior month so in this case at 50.3 what's it telling us is the u.s manufacturing sector only ever so slightly expanded over last month but that isn't the big deal deal it's because this happened after con contracting for 16 consecutive months that's the issue and demand now remains at the early stages of the recovery which is what the market believes with clear signs of improving conditions i'm going to show you why that that isn't the case at all and the market's misreacting to the data here but what matters is everyone thinks that the u.s economy has now gotten through the worst part and that the beginning of this you know new expansion is starting and the evidence evidences in the manufacturing sector. When we dig into the data, we'll find out that's not the case at all. But let's take a look at the glance report here. You can see that 50.3 number, but as you drill down a little bit, here's the real excitement is in new orders at 51.4. Now you may remember, we talk about how new orders is absolutely critical that you need to see an increase in that. So 51.4, you know, we get an increase over last month which had a very slight contraction. Look at this. And Employment, though, as things is where it stops to add up because the prior month it was 45.9, now it's a 47, indicating that manufacturers are still cutting employees just slightly. But we dig deeper, and customers are saying, well, they don't have enough inventory. And that really doesn't make a lot of sense because retailer inventories are sitting near record highs. What this may actually mean is they have the wrong inventory. That is the problem. But look at this the backlog of orders continues to contract. This is something that, of course, the market isn't really paying attention to because at some point, if you eat away through your backlogs and you don't have enough new orders to support your existing workforce, well, then what happens is exactly what that report said is you continue to trim workers, and that is dangerous. Let's talk about what's going on with the retailers here because we have retailer inventories. Now, we don't have the ISM data. We're pulling this from the FRED databases from the St. Louis Fed, but we do have the Philly Fed General Business Activity Index, which is a pulse of the manufacturing sector, and this is wonderful because the data goes back a very long ways. Now, when we take retailer inventories, we put that in red, 
put it on a year over year rated change and you'll notice it doesn't get negative now until it reaches underneath that green line and right now retailer inventories are expanding just at a slower pace the issue here is you notice that as retailer inventories start to come down on a year over year rate of change well so does of course general manufacturing activity and that's what's key here because we see retail their order demand slow down at a time when manufacturing here is starting again to give people this indication that we've got some green shoots, that we've gotten to the worst, and the Fed did indeed engineer the impossible. But did they? Well, not quite. As the ISM report feeds into the narrative coming out of last week, whereby the economy's resilience enables the Fed to be patient. And that's just it. The Fed did the fastest rate hiking cycle in history, and they didn't break the economy. Well, at least not yet, because one of the challenges, as I'll show you, is the issue comes underneath is that there was a ton of money in from the pandemic still sloshing around the economy. We know that that go has gone away, but not entirely, but every month that passes a little more and a little more evaporates and yet the economy isn't growing fast enough to for what is to come and for the bond market that means rates are going to stay higher for longer that was a reaction and of course in the bond market suggesting well the fed indeed has this right but really they don't and here you can see the general business activity index it's against the federal fund rate and what it shows us is in fact the fed should have already been cutting rates because many people look at the consumer price index because the fed tells them to it says that inflation matters now the fed really cares about lending they really care about manufacturing they really care about the employment sector, but this time they ignored it. Well, and it appears based on the data that they got it right. But remember, we look at the Philly Fed data, and even though the ISM was in contraction for 16 months straight, we see that this popped up and reverted. So maybe this is a one-off month as part of a bigger trend. We'll find out. But what's supporting the market's view here is the Fed got it right. Its developments included a personal income and spending data for February that showed consumption remains relatively strong while progress toward lower inflation has stalled out. Subsequently, Powell reiterated that the Fed wants to be more confident inflation trend before cutting rates, which we know will indeed happen at some point, and that strong labor market conditions means there's no urgency. That is until, of course, the U.S. labor market starts to unwind. And that's what's critical in that ISM data. It says, hey, look, we are still slightly laying off people. Why is that? Because the backlog of orders continue to get worked out. There's not going to be a lot of work left for these people. We need new order growth to surge in a huge, huge way. And one of the reasons this new order book is not going to continue going higher has everything to do with total compensation if consumers don't have the money and they don't have access to credit well they're not going to spend it here we see it's average hourly earnings multiplied by average weekly hours of production and non-supervisory employees that in red shown on a year-over-year -year rate change against the philly fed general manufacturing diffusion index and what do we see where the red line goes manufacturing follows and it makes perfect sense now you do get some trans pieces where well manufacturing activity surges and then it comes crashing down as of course consumers don't have the money to spend and you see now that the trend in total compensation is lower but everyone's starting to look ahead and say wait a minute maybe the second half this year everything comes out maybe these political elites were right and we need to get ahead of this before we actually don't have the capacity to meet demand but look at this March employment data which is coming this Friday is expected to show the slowest pace of job creation in several months though the u.s unemployment rate remains at historically low levels under four percent the reality is the labor market's going to cause some problems here as well again we look at the current general activity index for the philly fed the man pulse of the manufacturing sector there but let's look at the labor market now continued claims shown in red and what happens as continued claims rise it makes sense that manufacturing activity falls and this is real simple because as people go on unemployment and particularly stay on unemployment not only do they have less money, but they lose hope that the economy is going to turn around. So their spending declines. That means new orders go down. And when new orders fall, eventually general manufacturing activity falls. What the market is suggesting here is that we plateaued, that perhaps the cycle of rising continued claims is it. It caps out around 1.8 million. I don't think that's how it plays out. I believe this number is going to go higher because what we need to see is it start to come down in a big way. 
But a common theme among both surveys was that of soaring prices. This from Zero Hedge, as S&P Global noted that higher oil and raw material costs, plus increased transportation rates, reportedly added the cost burns at the end of the first quarter. Now, what was the driver behind that? Well, we know that West Texas Intermediate crude oil prices went up. That caused gasoline prices to go up. And that means producer prices in this case indeed go up. And the impact of rising labor costs was mentioned as a factor of pushing up selling price at a number of manufacturers. But just because manufacturers raise their prices, well, doesn't mean consumers are going to pay for it at all. But the market believes, well, they have the money. Now, let's take a look at this, because when we talk about yields and prices paid, there is a very strong relationship between these diffusion indices and, of course, what market rates are on treasuries. Here we know we have the prices paid index here still at Philadelphia with the manufacturing sector against 10 year treasury yields as shown in red. So you see slowdowns in the manufacturing sector match declines in treasury yields. And this makes really perfect sense when you think about it, because if demand's going down in a debt based economy, what does that tell you about rates? It simply means they're too high. And how do you spur, of course, people to go out and borrow money and finance? Well, it's certainly not higher rates, it's actually lower rates, so the interest rates then tend to fall. But notably, this cycle, no one believes that. Here you can see prices paid continues to head down. ISM saying, well, wait a minute, not exactly how that's working, but what the market believes is that not only are rates not high enough, that they just are going to stay elevated for some time. What's going to happen if indeed the bond market is right here at some level, that these higher rates are really going to bite in demand. And at some point, maybe in the months to come, we're going to see a huge crash in the economic data. Now, this would be the worst case scenario for the Biden administration, because we know that never have we seen a president running for a second term get reelected during a recession. That would be the worst thing that could happen. But will that something save this? Well, I'll show you what that is here in a bit. Because again, we talk about the probabilities that the market is right here and then indeed we are seeing what looks like that soft landing or no landing scenario play out as the economy emerges. And we can see this in the banking sector. If we look at the net percentage of domestic banks tightening commercial industrial loans to firms of all sizes, and these are the money creators in the economy. Again, we're gonna look at this against the general diffusion index for the Philly Fed, again, the manufacturing sector. And when banks are on that tightening lending, standards, well, demand goes down. We see it happen in the manufacturing sector. But what everyone's excited about is that maybe we're coming to the end of the cycle, unless we're actually not. And there's strong evidence that we're not there yet. And we can see that indeed in the yield curve. Now, this is where you take the 10 year and you subscribe the subtract the two-year treasury yield, and anytime it's under that horizontal black line shows an inversion. Well, when you have inversions, what follows that is yields come down. Now, many people think, well, that's wonderful. That's great news for the economy. It's terrible news for the banks because it means financial conditions are tightening. And now let's take a look at what happens with that Philly Fed index to show us that indeed this cycle is not over yet because when the curve starts to steepen and rates fall, what happens? Manufacturing sector falls off an absolute cliff. You see that happen over and over, suggesting that we aren't out of the woods yet at all. We need to see, of course, rates normalize, and that doesn't happen until the Fed brings short-term rates down enough that the curve gets inverted. They're not going to do that. At least there's no immediate plans, maybe as earliest as the summer, based on the ISM data. Again, this is dangerous news for the economy, which tells us that what we're seeing in this data this month is not an actual representation of where the U.S. economy is headed. And that is a problem. And you see that in this hope and kind of in the data here, these are some of the responses. Expecting to see orders in production pick up for the second quarter. Again, everyone's buying into the second half narrative as suppliers are working with us to help drive costs down, which will help improve the margin for the rest of the year. Here's another one, demand remains soft, but optimism is high that orders are well just on the horizon. Expectations are strong for that second quarter and continue to experience a softness in the industrial sector. There is an optimism that order activity will increase in the late second quarter. And how about this? Business activity is up, but many manufacturers are anticipating better business in the second quarter and much better in the third quarter. The issue question here is what if that doesn't materialize and everybody is running on hope that they're just 
cranking out new orders and getting trying to fill up shelves and the chance that the economy turns around well that would be a huge huge problem but there's there something that could stall out the manufacturing sector here in the u.s that could indeed give the biden administration some hope for some fed rate cuts and yes it is it's called the almighty dollar as Fed rate cut pushback puts the dollar on track for a quarterly gain. Now, mind you, when the market believes the Fed is either going to keep rates up or perhaps even raise rates further, which even though we see economic activity picking up here in the ISM data, highly unlikely we would see the Fed respond with higher rates, but that tells market participants, because again, they believe the dollar is correlated to Fed, Fed fund policy. That means the dollar's got to go up. And hawkish remarks from the Fed governor, Christopher Waller, added the speculation in the central bank is in well no hurry to loosen policy and will lag others in pivoting to rate cuts that drove traders to pair bets that the fed will start easing in june and help drive the euro below 108 per dollar for the first time in a month and if you take a look at the federal funds rate against the nominal dollar well you have virtually no relationship here even though everyone thinks there is one but what we do know is there are cases where a rising dollar does indeed get the Fed to cut. Now, the question may be, why does that happen? Well, let's take a look at the general activity index again, coming back to the Philly Fed. And what happens when the dollar goes up? Other currencies that are tied to the dollar, which is, well, virtually everything, well, they go down. And that means, of course, people look to other places for manufacturing and demand. So you see periods where the dollar is rising usually leads to a decline in U.S. manufacturing activity. And so maybe the one hope that the Biden administration has here that could ease some of their panic, well, that would be a rising dollar so it's enough slowdown in the u.s economy where it gets the fed to cut hopefully before the elections the challenge i think i'd love to know what you think is that we're headed into a recession by then but can you still make money before that yes you can because i think the stock in our sponsor today show power metals corp is going to make a massive 32 percent move here could be squeezed i'm going to show you how they've done this before and how you can jump in this is going to be a quick one you can find them on the otc and the symbol pwrml and on the TSXV under symbol PWM, everything in the pinned comment and link description below. Here you can see they're exploring, delivering, and developing cesium, lithium, and tantalum for power metals. Again, one of their premier mining companies in Canada. And this is an unprecedented opportunity, as I'm about to show you. Their tier one jurisdiction for four projects is strategically located to rail, hydropower, and infrastructure in Canada. They've got high grade lithium and cesium experienced board and management team here's the key 100 percent ownership strong financial position and here's the best part robust retail holders so as we look at the stock i want to show you that this stock is reflective of what the market believes in this company and that is a big thing you can find them again on the otcqb under symbol pwrmf on the txxv under pwm and here's the key part if you look at this directors management and retail they only hold 30 percent of the stock meaning of course again the market it is trading this as it expects and we look at this horsepower metals with north american focus they have their flagship project case lake displays high grade lithium at maine and east along with high grade cesium and we see of course there's battery initiatives all over north america and of course power metals is position strategically to take advantage of that here you can see they mobilize their drill rigs to case lake for their winter 2024 drill program as we look at some of their recent press releases they've acquired new ground in the south of hearst as successful drilling progresses at case lake and here's one of the big ones that came out last year winsome increases stake in power metals to 19.59 percent through acquisition of two strategic properties but now i'm going to show you what i think is a huge opportunity and their stock pull it up on your charts pwrmf txxv pwm let's take a look here at a five-year chart because what i want you to see we have the supply zones drawn in now what these what these are is where buyers and sellers are at so you can see this lower one you notice where there's buyers at and what happens it usually makes very rapid moves to the next zone which is way above here where the sellers are at but sometimes when the sellers get squeezed a bit the stock can jump and we can go back and see a case where it popped up here and then got squeezed higher 
pulled back, got squeezed higher again. It did it in this case, it jumped here. It has done it recently. And now we're standing up again because at the time of recording, the stock was holding this zone, meaning it's setting up for a 32% move higher here. You can see the daily candlesticks. It's holding this zone. Last time that happened, it jumped up here. 32% higher. In fact, it went even beyond that, which is setting up, again, an unprecedented opportunity in our sponsor today show. Power Metals, again, on the OTC, under symbol PWRMF, and on the TX. XV under symbol PWM. But as always, with any company we feature on our show, you're under no obligation to purchase their stock. Be sure to do your own research before placing any trades. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.